Hello and welcome back to my channel. Grab a cup of tea or something else and let's begin this video. So a few days ago I want to try something new, so this is very experimental for me. I have seen other artists doing this before, or not really doing this, but uh, I've seen artworks done with this technique. And it's done by with oil paints on a glass plate and then you place a paper on it and uh, that's a print, a mono print, because if you try to print it again, which I did try, you will see it later in the video, uh, you'll see that it doesn't really work that well. The other, the print number two, it becomes kind of faded and not really nice. So you see I was showing the supplies, my workstation and some papers that I have. And uh, in the beginning I'm just also testing a little bit. Uh, I tried to also do it with inks um, or ink, black ink, but uh, it didn't really work for my... like the drawing doesn't sit as much as I want it to sit, like the oil is easier to paint actual paintings with it while the ink is very flowy. And I'm showing the different papers that I have. This is prepared uh, rug paper with gesso on it. It did not work because the gesso was like not sucking in the oil paint. And this is oil paper by Arches, which, uh, which works very well. well. Well, at least the best of all the papers that I had. So in the beginning, I'm showing that I'm using an old brush that I don't care too much about. Uh, because I was starting out with inks and I'm so terrified of ruining my brushes uh, So I just took one that I don't care too much about because the ink it dries very fast uh, So in the beginning, beginning I'm trying out how it is to draw it and it does work if you only paint like very black But the print doesn't transfer that well and you will see that later also when I try to add water it uh, dilutes, no, or it starts to bead up on the glass plate. And when you then put uh, paper on it, it will be diluted, but very much wider and more flowed out than I was anticipating. So it was kind of harder to control. Also, I had to work very fast because, well, it does dry fast on the glass palette. Uh, and also you can see that my camera is moving and that's because it's mounted on a tripod that stands on my table so every little vibration <laughs> it catched so it's a bit annoying here's my first try of printing I didn't really like it though but I felt like I couldn't control the drawing too much and then I just cleaned it up And the camera is, uh, yeah, the autofocus is just jumping around. I need to fix that for the next video, how to film better. And there I wanted to try a test print with paint. And I also wanted to use the brush with the water and ink to paint around with the paint with. Just because the water and oil they do not mix it's not water mixable oils it's just regular oils so i thought since they don't mix maybe it will stick better to the paper or something i don't know maybe there's an effect uh, caused by the pushing because they don't mix uh, and you will see the result of that in my opinion it didn't really matter with the water so in my final prints, I decided to not use the water at all. I would just use oil and dilute it with oil. <laughs> and I tried it on the same paper uh, because it's a testing paper. And this paper is um, a water cold paper. So it's a cheaper paper. So there will be no waste. Also the water cold paper, it sucks the moisture a little better it's more thirsty than the final paper that i'm going to use but i like the result of this and the ink is like in the paper and then the oil paint is like laying on top you couldn't really see that on the video but if you take a closer look on my 
photos of the final results, which you can find on my website, you can see that. And then I cleaned up again and I took black and white oil paint, regular one. And the brand for this I used Kusakabe, which is a brand that I'm currently testing out and I'm happy with it so far. The ultramarine is a bit sticky, but other than that I'm really happy with the paints. And I'm using them, so... <clears throat> I also decided that to get a clear edge, I would um, use this tape to frame the painting. And uh, in my first try, I forgot to take off the paint, so you can see the paint stains and like the edges of the tape onto the final print, which is not ideal. But later on, you'll see that I would paint and then take off the tape and it will have clear edges and the print looks much nicer then. But I recommend using a tape. I use that tape. It's probably the most used item in my painting studio. <laughs> I use it for everything. It's a very weak tape and it's so smart. For many things. The reference photos I used for this series is uh, photos that I took myself and it's in black and white. I like black and white photography uh, with um, using a mirrorless camera and uh, I use a Fujifilm X-series and onto that I use um, vintage lenses. Uh, so for example Soviet lenses or other lenses. I only have Soviet only because they are the cheapest and they have cool effects and I feel that even though you are photographing digitally the edges and the blurring and everything it looks so good in black and white. When I take coloring photos it also looks old but not so old it looks vintage you, you know but in black and white it actually looks like the effects are incredible and you have to just try different lenses if you want to try it on with the camera and uh, you'll have to use a converter or just a ring but it's so worth it and it's so cheap it's, it's so ridiculously cheap those lenses in comparison to new lenses so I uh, have had uh, a few photo shoots and this is a photo shoot I did for, for a couple uh, for shibari, which is like a Japanese uh, traditional bondage, you know, no, nothing like uh, nudity or anything. Like the girl is wearing uh, something that looks like a kimono, that it's called a uh, yukata, which is a lighter type of kimono. And uh, so you'll see the theme. It's kind of, it looks kind of Japanese, just because, or yeah, she has black hair or and. Um, at least Asian looking uh, on the painting, but she she's from <laughs> where I'm from, basically. Um, but the the patterns of the yukata and the figures that you get with the flowing fabrics and, uh, and the light were in this uh, location. Uh, it was uh, an apartment that was. In the process of being rebuilt from like totally so it was just plain gray uh, what is called beton uh, concrete so it was just gray and the Sun would set when we took the picture so we had different lightings and it was quite amazing uh, I took many photos and I'm using this shoot to kind of have something to look at so the, there is a theme that it's uh, you can see, or you will see also later in the video, that every picture is kind of related um, to that. I had no idea how much paint I should use for a print, because I don't know how much it sticks to the plate and how much will be transferred onto the... Uh, Paper. Also here I did use the water 
thing with the ink to try out and the paper I tried first was the gessoed paper gessoed regular rag paper from bamboo I think the Hanamule <laughs> paper uh, with bamboo uh, that is gessoed and it did not work and you will see that in a second Oh, and uh, just ignore my nails. Uh, I don't really do my nails. It's actually so rare that I don't even own a nail polish remover. So that's why it's kind of looking like that. But I swear it's gone now. Also, my hands are always kind of dirty or with like ink or paint or whatever. So it kind of doesn't matter for me at least. You can see that most of the painting uh, stayed on the glass and very little got transferred and uh, I wasn't really happy with that. So I tried another print with a better paper but before I did that, because you can only print once, I decided that I need that way bigger layer of paint so it would actually transfer. So I had to paint much thicker and I used this uh, Green Square Oils by Sandelier and I think I also later on used regular oil uh, to thicken or to, to dilute the paint uh, to make it more floating. And I took some more paint and I decided to redraw or draw again or paint. Yeah, that's a better idea. The camera is really annoying when it moves, but it's because I'm touching the table and the table moves or something. The tripod, uh, tripod shoes <laughs> definitely stand on the floor. Maybe that helps. trying to redo the patterns uh, but it was hard because the paint was so thick but it's a pattern of uh, these uh, is it called crane these uh, birds big birds that was uh, patterned onto the yucca and this paper is the real paper like the um, arches for oil paper it's a hell of a expensive but uh, it's so nice. I actually like it. Many people do not like it. And this is also the first time trying it actually. Many, many people do not like it because it doesn't have that texture. And, it, and it's also very thirsty in comparison to other uh, papers for oils or acrylics. This print I liked much more. It's still, most of the paint is still onto the glass plate. But I think all in all, when I if I had painted the painting on a plate uh, and not printing it, it's the same about the same amount of paint I would use in the end. And there we can see the um, stripe from the <laughs> uh, from the tape I should remove. But uh, I learned from that, and I really like this print, so it's up on my website actually. And then I just cleaned it and. I'm showing the paper towel there, but I quickly found out that uh, I can just clean it and make it into a pile and the pile will be grey and that grey can definitely be used for the next ones. So the first one I was cleaning off, but then I did many more prints and each time I cleaned off and put it into a pile and used the grey for the next print. So it's a little bit more economical when I do it more times. The next painting is uh, another face. I decided to go for very simple silhouettes and very simple 
black and white uh, simply shaped pictures or references because you cannot paint very detailed in a such a small place without <laughs> um, in so thick layers in one go so quickly and then it will even you know be very uneven when you uh, print it or like not uneven but like blurry and you will have its effect so I think it looks better if you do it very simply here I'm a detail freak uh, usually that's kind of the reason I want to do this because I want to get looser and be a little bit more experimental I still, still like the result. I'm not an abstract painter at all. I'm more like a realism kind of painter. I like portraits and lots of details. So this was quite a fun project for me and I really like the result and I think I will do more of this and you will see uh, in the end uh, how, I, how it goes. It looks like I am pressing it for a very short time but I'm just cutting the video so you don't have to see how long it takes for me to uh, wait for it to sit and I'm looking at it and uh, I wasn't really happy with it and there's another one just speeding through here uh, full size silhouette and I also never painted like in black and white and like grays it's kind of difficult because the grays is so dark always. You have to use so little black and so much white to get the right shade. Maybe I should do like monochromatic paintings more because it's probably good for me. And I know people do that when they learn in academies and stuff. But I never went to an academy like officially, like as a like a degree, only like for shorter courses. But maybe I should do that. And there you can see the like ropes going around her whole body. I mean, it's very discreet. You can't tell if, in case, unless you didn't, unless you know the what it is or the story. I like it. I like when it's kind of you can't see what it is, but you can kind of see it, so you can guess. I like that. And now I see that uh, with this one this background i didn't paint it into and mix into the form of the figure and that makes when you print it it will get very hard edges oh and here i'm taking off the tape this is painful to watch because i'm uh, <laughs> losing it onto the painting but uh, it only happened that one time i did film the process and after that i was more careful because sometimes i get too when i film i look at the monitor all the time to make sure it's in focus and then I kind of get unfocused, ironically. Uh, and here's the good paper again, the arches one, and I'm placing it. And yeah, I want to say that when I didn't bring the background all the way to the figure, I found, oh, okay, you didn't see the lift, my bad. Uh, well, it would get very hard edges. So the next ones I made sure to make the background go and you know blur a little bit the hard edges of the contour of the, the figure to make sure that it doesn't look too harsh. And this one I want to try colors. I did a few also I think that I added a little bit of color but not a lot. Like a few dots on the yucatan stuff and it looks really cool and you can see the final results in the end and on my website it was really cool with the colors actually but you have to do a very fat blob of paint to make it actually show on the actual print yeah here you can see i'm taking it all the way through so i'm touching the figures with the background and i didn't do a lot of Actually, it was not a. It was a black and white photo, and I just guessed the colors because I know the colors, ish because I was there. <laughs> um, so I'm just playing with colors randomly, and I'm doing it very simple. Like the gray is kind of pink-ish some places, and the pink uh, 
skin tones it's kind of grayish so I wanted to make it a very kind of monochromatic or at least very thin like a like it mixes together it's not very detailed I mean it's more detailed <laughs> on the glass plate and but you will see when I print it uh, it's very not detailed but I like doing this it's very fun and there you can see the girl and the guy is behind uh, doing the ropes and you see that she is wearing this kata. it's very beautiful and it's very like peaceful and um, it's kind of interesting to look at it's kind of like a um, type of meditation uh, and communication rather than something uh, very, I don't know, kinky or whatever. I think it's very beautiful. And there I'm taking off the tape and I actually filmed it and no problem. I forgot that I was filming that. And let's place the paper. I think this time I wanted most of the paint onto the paper, so I think I did put some books on it. Yeah, you will see that very soon. But I placed some books just to add on the weight of the press and I also let it sit for a little while. Um, and then I took the books away to reveal the print. really happy with this one actually although maybe a third of the paint transferred and I can really not you know I don't know how to control that but I love the effect it's very loose and it's very abstract ish but not really and it works for me who is I have a problem with uh, painting Oh, I tried to place another paper just to see if I can print it twice because I liked it so much. So this is a watercolor paper because I thought maybe it will uh, suck more of the paint onto it because it's more thirsty than the other one. And it's... Uh, I mean, I like the part with the girl, but nothing else. You can see the texture is very boring, like it's very even and dry looking I don't know I didn't like it and then I tried another one with the even more thirsty paper this is like a Japanese uh, rice paper or something I think you use this a lot for printing but more for uh, a wood print or uh, this lino cut prints and etc I've done that test, but not this I want to try if the oil I don't know if this is archival or not, but I want to try. And I got some ideas why I was while I was doing it because I liked how the painting looked with the paper on it. So I, I got some idea what about painting a painting and then put this paper on it and let it dry <laughs> to kind of like destroy ish the painting, but you're not really destroying it, you're just coloring it, but something is feeling true anyway. I don't know. But uh, the print was very weak and didn't really work. But that's, I guess, why it's called monoprint. You can only have it once. This is another print. This is not the same. Let's see what this is. Oh, I think it's colors. Yeah, there is colors there. Colors, colored blobs. I really like this print as well. I think it's cool. You can see the whole process in the end on my floor draw and then a few snapshots from up close. Uh, the video is cutting the actual how they look but uh, if you go to my website you can see the all of the results that I liked uh, because I put them up on sale just in case. I like this one the most I think or this one. 
I'm not sure. But this was really joyful. I hope you liked the video and uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye.